Hey guys, how's it going? Alex Scott here with Concertini.com. Thanks so much for checking out another one of our videos. Today is going to be something of a tutorial looking at a feature that exists between PreSonus Studio One version 4.6 and the PreSonus Faderport 16 production controller. Now, you guys know if you've watched anything on the channel that I love control surfaces. In my big studio back home, I have an Icon QCon Pro X that's been one of our most popular videos. Well, I'm, you know, as you guys probably know I'm kind of traveling and living in Southeast Asia at the moment and have needed to do some work here so I ended up getting myself one of these fader port 16s because it integrates beautifully with studio one obviously it's a lot smaller and doesn't have the meter bridges or some of the other features that the QCon does uh, but it is an amazing little control surface I've been extremely happy with it and in this particular video I'm gonna talk about one of the features called control link that allows the fader port 16 to control not only all of the native plugins in studio one but actually any third-party plugin this control surface has a mode that allows you to really simply and really quickly map the control surface the faders to controlling basically any plugin that you have in your library it comes pre-mapped for all the PreSonus plugins including fat channel and that's the one that we're going to be focusing on because if you guys have watched our review on the console one the soft tube console one uh, you guys will know that that's a huge part of my of my mixing workflow you can actually even see the bottom of it right here because um, i have it mounted above uh, my favorite port 16 and i still love the console one it's a fantastic piece of hardware um, and the, the SoftTube plugins and the Universal Audio plugins that it's able to work with sound spectacular. But now that I've gotten the Studio One uh, Fat Channel expansion pack, which we will have a review on, and the Fader Port 16, it really gives Console One a run for its money in terms of having some really amazing, very authentic sounding uh, vintage gear emulations that we do have really, really great hands on control of. So. Basically, you know, I have a I'm going to have a separate review of the fader port 16 on the channel. And um, this is mainly just looking at this this kind of edit plugin or I think they call it control link feature, how to set it up and how it works um, again, both with the with the stock plugins within Studio One and also how we can map it to our third party plugins. It's super, super easy. Before we dive into it, I do just have to say I know on screen um, these scribble strips are going to show up as bright white. I've actually been trying for several hours to adjust my lighting here in my little temporary studio setup to where you guys can see uh, what's on these scribble strips. It just can't be done. Filming screens with cameras can be really, really tricky. So I apologize that those are basically just going to look white and washed out. Uh, but I will be telling you guys what shows up there because it basically just very accurately reflects the values and names of all the parameters. But again, I'll let you know what those say as we kind of go through this. But basically, the Vader Fort 16, as we'll discuss in the review, it's a great control surface and it does everything, you know, if we just flip over into track mode, um, it does everything that you would kind of expect a DAW controller to do. We can solo tracks, we can mute tracks, we can uh, obviously control volumes and we've got our transport control, all that stuff works great. But the really amazing thing is this button right up here, which is labeled edit plugins. So we select our track right now. I've got a drum bus selected. And as you guys can see on screen, we have the fat channel XT with the expansion pack loaded up here. I have the tube comp, which is kind of an LA 2A style compressor and then the vintage EQ, which is a Neve 1081. I have the, these loaded up in fat channel. Okay. Well, when I go ahead and I hit edit plugins, the first window it's going to bring me to is this right here. And again, I know you guys can't see the scribble strips, but this says drums. It has the different plugins that I have loaded as inserts on the channel. So the first one is a VU meter, which I have right here. You can see on the screen, this just is a nice little monitoring thing that you're able to do within Studio One. Next is the fat channel. And then we have a tape delay from the Arturia FX pack, which I'll get into in a second. That's going to be our third party plugin that we're going to look at. But fat channel we have right here is on this second strip and we just hit the select and that is going to flip the controller over into controlling the fat channel plugin. And again, this all comes pre mapped with the fader port 16 out of the box. So basically how this breaks down is it's controlling our EQ on this half and it's controlling our compressor on this half. So again, sorry, you can't see these screens, but basically these screens tell us not only what each fader is doing, 
So right here, we're as you can see on screen, we're changing the frequency that the low EQ is working on. So we can select a frequency that way. And now we can boost and cut on our EQ just like that. And those labels are showing up along with dB value for the frequency or for the gain boost and cut on the frequency. And then the actual frequency itself, 110 hertz, 60 hertz, 35 hertz, 220 hertz, etc. That's all showing up here on the controller. But it's not just the faders, it's actually the buttons as well. So you can see this button, we hit it, turns yellow. This is now engaged the EQ. If we go over here to our compressor, we can do the same thing. This button over here, which there's a label showing up on the scribble ship that says compressor on, that's allowing us to toggle our compressor on and off. This next button here is allowing us to toggle. You can see the mode on the compressor right here is switching between limit and compress on this little LA-2A emulation. Now for the compressor section, we have our gain. You can see that affecting the gain knob. And then we have our peak reduction. You can see that affecting peak reduction. So that's all really, really cool, right? That's all kind of how you would expect the channel surface to map to any plugin. That's, that's not super unique, but what's unique, especially within the context of fat channel, is that if I go in and I select a different EQ, say we grab our Helios EQ, and then a different compressor, let's grab our TubeTech CB1. You can see these faders have suddenly changed. We haven't switched menus, we haven't refreshed anything, it's always updating in real time. And now we have our EQ, our EQ controls have been adjusted to work with the, these two new kind of models or emulations um, that we have that, that we've loaded up. So now, because on this he, kind of Helio style EQ, we have um, a level or kind of output gain adjustment. We have phase inversion on this EQ. Um, we have, you know, obviously we're selecting the frequency on our base, you know, roll off filter, all this stuff. We've now flipped over and taken control of this. Same with the compressor. You can see we've got some more faders that have moved up now and we've got now different controls over our compressor here, this, this CB1 TubeTech compressor. So it's all, you know, kind of dynamic. It's all happening in real time. And when you use this in conjunction with the fat channel, it's really, 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 really fast. It's almost as fast as using the console one, which is why I love the console one. It it's makes mixing so much easier. But now this, this fader port, you know, it's basically doing the same thing, but I actually kind of like some of the modules that come with this fat channel expansion almost more than what comes with console one. The console one stuff sounds amazing, but I've been really blown away by what PreSonus has been able to do with this fat channel expansion. So that's very, very cool. So that is basically how it works. Now, if we add another, say, stock plugin from Studio One, like come hit, come down here, I have their Room Reverb, which is just a very basic reverb. You can see as soon as I open the plugin, it swaps over, right? And now we're seeing all, you know, again, sorry, you guys can't see the scribble strips, but this is all of our uh, parameters for our reverb are now showing up on here. And if I want to go back to editing fat channel on the drum plugin, we just hit edit plugins. Boom, swap back over to the fat channel, boom, edit plugins, room reverb right there. Now we can back back out into our track view again, switch this over to where I can view all tracks. Now let's go ahead and our vocal. As soon as I select vocal on the fader port 16, you can see it's brought me to, to our vocal track here in my little session that I've got going on. Now let's open up another stock reverb plugin here. Um, and I'll show you guys how we can switch back and forth. So now we have the same reverb plugin, but now it's on the vocal. Well, edit plugin and boom, we've got our reverb pulled up already because that's the main, that's currently the only plugin on the vocal channel. But now let's say we're mixing, we're mixing, we, we're done editing that reverb, but I wanna jump back over to the drums. Well, I don't even have to go onto the screen or use my mouse or anything. I can just navigate back over to my drum channel, boom. And now it's going to pull up those plugins on the drum channel again. Let's say I want to get back into the fat channel on the on the drum channel or on the drum bus rather. As you guys can see, this is incredibly fast. It's incredibly intuitive and it's incredibly easy. So I'm I'm loving this. This is actually be quickly becoming a pretty integral part of my mixing workflow. And when I get back to my real studio back home or my big studio, I, this is a feature I'm really going to miss on my big QCon Pro X's. In any case, let's just take real quick, take a look at a third party plugin. So this is 
uh, Arturia's Delay Tape 201. So this is a Roland Space Echo um, kind of clone or, or recreation from Arturia. And um, we're going to have a whole video on the channel about the Arturia effects collection, which I love and have been using a ton. This is one of the things included in that collection. But as you can see, this is a third party plugin. This is not from PreSonus. This was designed by Arturia. And boom, we have all this control going on. It's already automatically pulled up. And we don't just have the faders, but we also have some buttons assigned to do things. So I can take the plugin out of bypass here. And now you can see I've got faders and we have control. There's echo amount, reverb amount. I've got control there. I also have some of these buttons linked. So we've got sync on and off, rate link on and off. I've been able to assign all of the faders and all these buttons to do various things within this particular plugin. Now, was this incredibly complicated to do? No, it was not. Studio One has created this feature, which again, I believe is called Control Link, that sits right up here uh, within Studio One that works so incredibly intuitively. Let me show you guys how we do this. So I'm gonna open up yet another 30 third party plugin. I've already mapped that Delay 201. But now let's grab a spring reverb from soft tube. This is a great sound, a little spring reverb plugin. Super simple plugin. So let's go ahead and see what all we have to do in order to map this. You, right now, the scribble strips are blank and obviously the faders are all down, but we're still in edit plugin mode. So this is because we haven't mapped anything. So all I do is I grab this first fader, move it a little bit or even just touch it because this is all touch capacitive. So touch fader one, and you can see in our little control wink link window here, which is just an integrated part of Studio One, it now says fader one. Well, now I'm gonna click this mix knob, and there's this little arrow right here. Click that, boom, we're done. Now, immediately the word mix and a value has shown up on fader port. I, it doesn't say parameter one. It doesn't say anything generic. It knows that this is now the mix knob. So now same thing, let's grab fader two, click our springs, which adjusts the tone of the reverb and link. And now we have springs and a value has showed up on our scribble strip and now we're controlling. It is that simple. Now I don't have to save a configuration file. I don't have to do anything. This is forever stored in Studio One. Anytime I open this plugin up in any session anywhere, it's going to remember. So, you know, that's just a quick overview of how this works. It's fantastic. I absolutely love it. And now let's say, you know, I've edited my spring reverb to, to be whatever we want here. Boom, back. Let's jump over to Fat Channel. And it's pulled Fat Channel back up. Let's go back over to Room Reverb. It's pulled Room Reverb back up. Spring Reverb. It's pulled that back up. You know, it, it is just that fast, it's just that easy, and it's just that intuitive. I absolutely love it. And then we can back back out, go back into our track mode here, and of course control um, all of our volumes. Just the way that this surface works, and especially because we have the ability to jump around um, like this, and it's so easy to navigate and get to exactly where we need to get to, and boom, now I am back to editing uh, you know, with the, with the fat channel here on the drums. It's so fast, it's so easy, it's so intuitive. Um, I absolutely love it. it. It's my favorite feature that I have found uh, with the favorite port 16 so far. And, and I gotta say, man, you know, the, the guys at PreSonus, they just keep doing such incredibly cool stuff with Studio One. You know, it's it really amazes me just the quality of the plugins that it comes with, how powerful it is, but then all of these subtle little things where, you know, you get one of their production controllers or one of their mixing controllers, and it's integrated so deeply and so creatively, and it's so powerful. If you get one of their interfaces, you know, I understand that their interfaces, and if you have their preamps and stuff, it it integrates into Studio One and then, you know, where you can control phase and phantom power from within the DAW and stuff. It is just, it's so cool, it's so powerful, and, and I am continually amazed by everything that, that PreSonus is able to do. So um, if you guys have a Fader Port 8 or a Fader Port 16, they can both do this. Again, we're gonna have reviews on the Fader Port 16. We also already have a review on the PreSonus Fat Channel Expansion Pack. Um, so if you have those things, you have a, a Fader Port 8 or 16 and the Fat Channel, um, you have a 
really incredible kind of channel strip builder slash plug-in control surface already at your fingertips that you may not have even known about. So super, super cool. Highly recommend you guys check it out. And uh, yeah, but as always, I would love to know, what do you guys think about this? Do you have, uh, do, you, do you like the console one? Do you like your fader port? Do you have a control surface or a plug-in controller that you guys really like to use? Uh, definitely let me know in the comments down below. I always love hearing from you. Uh, if you have not yet subscribed to the Concert DNA channel, please do that. Uh, definitely helps us out. And be sure to click the notification bell to stay up to date with our new videos. But again, my name is Alex Scott with ConstantDini.com. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and we will see you in the next video. Bye!